Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to JOD Traders Tea Time with me, Darius Nunchauskas. Today is the 22nd of April 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, Wednesday's afternoon recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, um, the usual stuff. Uh, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so um, also just um, before we jump in, a uh, quick, um, quick mentioning of our JFD uh, YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. Um, and of course, our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, uh, which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top and it'll take you to this page, like I said, which we update on a daily basis. So yep. And now then guys, um, before we jump into the charts, uh, let's quickly uh, refresh this page. Uh, that was the previous number. Let's see how much it has risen or it has grown. Um, so, okay, so it has gone up a little bit, but not by much. So basically that's a good, uh, good indication. Um, the fact that of course the U S is leading the the, the leading the way here, um, um, probably not something to be proud of, but nevertheless, it is leading the way, uh, leading the table here of the total amount of infections and the uh, total amount of deaths, because uh, this number here, it's, it, although Italy is has uh, uh, around 24,000 uh, registered cases, uh, uh, death cases, of course. Um, U.S. Um, is leading by uh, almost 20. Uh, well, actually, actually le leading by 20,000 extra, uh, by 20,000 more deaths. So, so yeah, basically that's uh, that kind of puts us puts U.S. in into the uh, leading. Uh, position, um, but like I said, this is not really the 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 table where you should be uh, on the top. So, anyway, uh, jumping into a few charts here. Now, the first one I want to touch on here is the S and P 500. Um, the market is not open yet, but we can see that the cash index is. Uh, is moving around uh, 2,776 marks. So basically it closed uh, yesterday around here. Um, let me just jump into a daily chart quickly. <clears throat> so it broke this upside line and uh, closed the day um, around the 27, uh, 2736 mark and uh, basically remained uh, above this 27 uh, 2,729 territory, which is the, uh, the lowest point of 2000 and, uh, or actually the lowest point of June, 2019. So it, it failed to move below this. I've talked about this level previously on Monday. And what I was saying that if we get a nice da daily close below this territory, then yes, we could see a further move lower. Uh, the, the close never happened. The price is now reversing back to the upside. However, um, this is where we will remain very careful and cautious. First of all, we will get rid of this upside line because it's just going to start confusing us a little bit more. So let's get rid of that and let's get rid of this, um, uh, the Fibonacci here, because again, that that's no longer valid here. So basically what we're going to focus here mainly on will be uh, some of these uh, recent uh, highs and lows. And uh, in a way for us to get comfortable with higher levels, we would like to see a push uh, above the high of last week, which was around the 2875 territory. So only a break of that 
could open the path towards higher levels or actually it's even uh, 2879 zone so yep that's even better here so just to be more on the safe side so in a way as long as the room stays between these two levels between the 2729 and the 2879 then yep we will remain neutral uh, we need to see a clear break through one of these <clears throat> for one of these levels before kind of considering uh, a possible further uh, directional move so um, in and like I said with that's in terms of the downside this level that, were, that I've just highlighted and in terms of the uh, the upside that's what we need here we need to see a break above the high of last week near the 2879 zone so for now guys basically long story short we're waiting we're waiting for a clear break. Um, jumping into gold very quickly here. So this today, um, today it's pushing higher, or at least it's trying to make its way back up here. It's uh, keeps keeps on balancing around this uh, psychological 1700 level, but the level that we're keeping close eye on is the uh, 170304, roughly around there, because that's the highest point of March. Um, previously, it acted recently. It acted as a good area of support. Now it's acting as a as a good area of resistance. Um, now. Also, what I've talked about recently was about uh, was I was talking about this level here, the uh, 1680 zone. So, <clears throat> basically, as you can see, um, the over the past few days. Um, gold was not able to close below the territory it was able to break it but was not able to close it so in a way for now what we're gonna do here is uh, well we're basically gonna just wait here basically we were waiting for uh, a clear close um, either above the 1704 territory or an, a close below the uh, 1680 zone. If we get a drop below the 1680, then yes, uh, could see deeper extensions to the downside. However, for now, the the, pair, uh, the the commodity is knocking on the door of the 1704 mark. So if we get a daily close above this, then maybe this could uh, clear the path towards uh, back to these highs that we saw last week so around the 1747 48 zone roughly around there and then we would take it from there for now we're just waiting and, and watching so um brent oil so uh with brent oil it's quite interesting so i mean it dro it drifted lower it, this morning when i was covering brent oil it was testing this area here the 1665 level and let me just show you what that level was in the past that's basically the lowest point of 2001 and it was testing this area uh, from which it, as you can see it rebounded and uh, well I mean for now uh, it's it seems that it's showing good results however don't uh, probably the bulls should not get their hopes up yet uh, for now everything's still tricky as you can see we still remain below this 21.64 territory which is the uh, the lowest point of March and in a way if it continues to trade below this then well uh, we could see uh, another round of selling but if we climb back above this uh, above this territory then maybe there is a bit of hope we could see some uh, action here some activity to the upside and uh, well we may see maybe some higher levels here but again for now uh probably the suggestion here would be uh to um wait this one out guys uh don't rush into this yet because it again as you as you are aware the market is very complex right now as uh, the oil market is very complex um ethereum now ethereum uh this morning it um kind of it was trading uh lower here it basically it came back down below the 200 EMA on the daily chart so in a way uh, we could see this as a as a bit of a um, a bearish um, a bit of a bearish indication to be honest because if it struggles to move back above the 200 e 200 day EMA here then well I mean we could well we could see maybe a bit of downside however uh, in order to get comfortable with the downside now previously I talked about this level here the 146.60 but because we've moved already uh, what we could do here is we could keep an eye on the low of the current low of this week which is around the um, 166.13 zone roughly around here let me just yep that's roughly around there guys so if we get a drop below the 166 territory then yes we could consider some lower levels um, 
for now uh yes the let me just shift this highlighted area right here because this is the barrier that we're going to be monitoring right now so um yep uh as i said um it did try to make its way higher last week it did close above this uh 200 day ema but however as you can see the the bears took the to the control and uh, pushed the price back down towards this uh short term a bit tentative upside support line taken from the low of the 13th of march so, um, the, the like I said, the crypto now is uh, getting a hold up near the 200-day EMA. Um, and as I've just mentioned briefly, in order for us to get comfortable with higher levels, that's the level that we're going to be looking at, the 189 zone. So, that's the high of last week. Um, and uh, basically, a nice good push above this could, uh, or should I say would, first of all, confirm a forthcoming higher high. And maybe more buyers could see this is a good opportunity to step in. Um, for now, now we'll be very careful because it's very close to this uh, upside line and of course the fact that it's below the mm, below the the the, two, the 200 EMA here on the daily chart so yep that kind of raises concerns about a possible move higher but uh, in order to get comfortable we need to see a drop below the 166 level first that's just to be like I said to be more on the safe side uh, jumping into a few pairs now GBP uh, USD now I talked about briefly about this one this um, this morning and um, basically I was saying telling you guys to keep a close eye on the uh, inflation figures that came out today uh, from UK and uh, well, the year-on-year -year, uh, March CPI came out as expected, uh, 1.5. Um, the of course the that's below below um, below the previous number, um, but uh, as you can see the the uh, British pound against the US dollar is pushing a little slightly to the upside. Um, here, I mean the market probably was expecting. Uh, Slightly, uh, maybe a lower number some, than 1.5. However, they get it got the, the exact uh, forecast. Um, on the other front, the PPI input and output numbers those um, those kind of came out much better than the uh, than the forecasted. So maybe that this is giving a bit of a boost here for the British pound. And this is the idea that I spoke about this morning, where I said that we may see a bit of a correction here to the upside. And this is the arrow exactly showing this so what I was saying that in a way we could see maybe a push a bit of a, a, a bit of a push to the upside towards the 21 day EMA here um, however if it still remains below this barrier if the pair remains below the 1.2485 then well I mean we could see another round of selling guys so that's why uh, the <clears throat> the bull should be very careful um, and another thing is that even though we're going to target the downside first we will aim for this level the the lowest point of October 2019 after that we'll take it from there we'll see what he wants to do if he wants to drift further to south then yes we will examine that but we would for that we would need to see a nice good daily candle close uh, below this territory below the 1.2195 so keep your eyes on that one um, GBP Aussie quick update and this is what I was talking about this morning as well uh, basically we were hanging around just slightly below the subside support line and what I was saying that we needed to see in order to get comfortable with lower levels we needed to see not only a break of this upside line but also a drop below the 1.9291 zone but as you can see the pair kind of reversed uh, back to the upside it got pushed back to the upside so in a way now it's trading back above this uh, upside support line so um, however that doesn't mean that this could uh, reverse sharply to the upside or should I say uh, that doesn't mean that we will get comfortable from here uh, examining the upside we will get comfortable uh, with examining the upside only from around the 1.9868 territory or some, somewhere around here and uh, because this would also place uh, the rate above the 21 day EMA and then yep higher levels could be met for now we're just gonna remain neutral uh, US dollar against the Turkish Lira now this is something that you probably don't look at very often but it's quite interesting because we are at levels last time seen in August 2018 so uh, you can see that we are we are pushing higher and let me just actually jump back into a daily chart that will be probably easier um, so we have managed to overcome the high of the 31st of August um, so yep that's the is the, the 
the 31st. Let me just quickly double check, guys. Um, so that's the 30th of August 2018. So we managed to overcome that, and uh, now the pair is pushing towards the the highest point of um, of August uh, near the 7.20, uh, 7.2070 territory. So roughly around there. Um, however, the big question. Can it actually reach that? Because uh, again, don't get me wrong. Once the um, once we the, we see the uh, country, the European countries uh, to, starting to ease off a little bit on the on their restrictions or their, on their travel restrictions, um, we could see this pair reversing back to the downside. So basically, for now, um, of course, don't get me wrong. If uh, the 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 Turkish Central Central Bank would need to be intervening here as well uh, in order to support that because not only the, the restrictions are not going to, only not, uh, removal of the restrictions is not going to really help this, but um, a bit of maybe stimulus from the Turkish Bank Central Bank could help here. Um, but again, for now, we're just keeping a close eye on this one. It is pushing higher. Looking at this picture, it is moving to the upside. So let's see if it can actually stay above that psychological seven uh, seven mark. So yep, let's see the seven uh, seven lira mark. So let's see if if that happens. However, for now, it the pair is just balancing slightly below that. So it did try to overcome it yesterday and today, but as you can see, for now, it's unsuccessful. So, but we still have a uh, the full US session to go through. Uh, US dollar against the Swiss franc. Now here the situation is quite tricky and this is what I talked about previously. Um, what I was saying that we needed to see a nice good push above this barrier here, the 0 0.9724 in order to kind of uh, consider higher levels. This is the high of the 17th of April. Um, you could anyway capture this little high, the high of yesterday near the 1 0 0.9727. Um, so you could keep an eye on that one, but let me just jump into a four our chart on this one probably so we'll keep an eye on this barrier uh, just to be on the safe side a push above this would create uh, a new high for this week if the if the move higher happens however as you can see the pair is now drifting back down uh, first of all let's get rid of this downside line is no longer needed because it's kind of it kind of got violated so the main focus right now will be on these um, on these levels here on these um, on on the low here on the zero and uh, let me just first of all let me just talk about this one but um, I'll get to this lower level in a moment um, but basically in order for us to consider higher levels we need to see a nice good push above the high of yesterday um, and then yes we could consider uh, for a further move higher first of all uh, probably let me just adjust this arrow because first of all what we're going to target here is this one right this barrier the 0 0.9797 which is the current highest point of April uh, because in a way let's let's keep it short and simple let's not overstretch this to the upside um, if it if it will break this barrier here, but um, this is a good this could be a good area of resistance. If that gets broken, then yes, it could travel all the way here towards the highest point of March near the 0 0.99 level. Now, in terms of the downside, and this is what I saw was was saying that wait, let me just get back to this. Now, the area that we're going to be keeping a close eye on here is the um, the lowest point of um, let me just double check this very quickly. That's that's correct. That's going to be the lowest point of April near the 0 0.9588 zone so uh, the current lowest point because we need to specify this because in a way still we have some days left in in April to trade so yep um, be very careful with that now again even if we see a drop below this we will take a very cautious approach and we will only target this little level the 0 0.9497 which is the low of the 29th of March if we get a test of this area then yes we will reevaluate everything again however for now um, we this is what we're looking here for we are keeping close eye on these two levels uh, euro NZD probably something that uh, we haven't looked at for quite a while and uh, the only thing is that what I wanted to show you here is that the pair kind of after finding some support around here, um, around near the 1.7820, uh, sorry, 1.7840. 
2 territory, um, it started pushing higher. And today, for example, it did drift lower a little bit, but found good support near the 200 EMA on the 4-hour chart. As you can see, it acted as a very good area of support, and then it rebounded, and now it's pushing to the upside. Now, what we're going to do here is, in order to aim for higher levels, we'll wait for a push above the, uh, the high of last week, near the 1.8296.97 territory and if we do get a nice push above this this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and the uh, yep higher levels could be met but in other words a long story short guys uh, for us now these are the two levels that we're going to be keeping a close eye on it's the the first one is the 1.89 oh, sorry 1.8297 90, uh, territory and the other one is the um, this one right here near the uh, 1.7842 42 zone. So we need to see a clear break um, through one of these because again, for now, basically, if let's say the pair travels higher but finds good resistance somewhere around here and then reverses back down, then, well, guess what? We're getting ourselves in, uh, a nice range here. So that's why we're not going to rush in, uh, rush this one, and uh, we'll wait for a confirmation break. And finally, Euro USD. So this one, uh, I talked about this one this morning, and uh, basically what I, was, what I was telling you guys to keep in mind the potential idea of a descending triangle. Now the pair is pushing higher right now, um, however it's getting closer to the 100 EMA so it could still travel a little bit more to the upside but if it struggles to overcome this downside line taken from the high of the 29th of March then we may see another round of selling. But um, as long as we stay in this area right here, we will stay neutral because for us to examine the upside, we would need to see, as I've mentioned this morning, we would need to see a push above the a break. First of all, not only about a break of this upside, uh, sorry, downside resistance line, but also a break of the 200 EMA on the four hour chart. And ideally, we would like to see a, a a close at least of a four hour candle above the 200 EMA here on the four hour chart and then we could consider some higher levels. Until then we're just observing this one because even with the downside we need to see a drop below the 1.0777 before uh, getting excited uh, with slightly lower levels and the slightly lower levels could be around the uh, 1.0633 level which is the uh, lowest point of March. So, um, so yeah, guys, for now, it's a very interesting situation. So keep your eyes on this. Uh, keep your eyes on the, those other instruments that I've just mentioned. And, uh, yep, wait for the confirmation break. So, okay, guys, I really hope you found it useful. And uh, really, really appreciate all your help, all your, you know, your views and your likes. And, uh, and thank you very much for st sticking with my videos. And uh, really appreciate that. So if you want to catch my video tomorrow morning uh, as always around six o'clock GMT time so maybe just a little bit after that um, so that the video would get uploaded and uh, yeah we'll take it from there we'll have a look at some of these some of these instruments some new ones and we'll see what to expect from the market tomorrow so thank you very much guys and bye bye